There's railways in that direction. Evidence of the old railways in that direction, I should say. Uh, we'll find the struts of the bridges for the L and Y railway company system that was combed to Liverpool. It's on the other side of where, on the brow there, on the horizon, that's a dam for Elton Reservoir, Manchester, Bolton and Berry Reservoir, which feeds this canal. It fills up this canal at, at about a mile in from its start and empties about a mile in from its start, but it has to fill the entire system before it can empty. So that's the important bit. So there's no other, there's no other um, water channels filling this all the way to Knob End Locks, Canal Locks. And there's a bridge over there. And the water towards that. There's many different ways. So we're going to follow the canal today, not the guide. There we can see the iron bridge from the Metrolink system and train line. It'd be very good. There's a chimney in the horizon there. It's in there. There's also a pylon, it's next to the pylon. There's no running taps till like in the thirties and up to the seventies some of these houses didn't even have running water. So it's one of the first railways and some of the innovators and Mr. Beely also owned at the end of this guy which travels one and three quarter miles as I've said he had a mill which was powered by six turbine water wheels and let's try not to do things like this that's just disgusting isn't it I was in the air well it's your planet too whoever's dumping that ends up in your drinking water, your children's drinking water, as well as mine. So you're not getting away with anything, you're not smart. Let's carry on. Save our green belt. Just gonna walk down from the top there. That's the highest point, there's, there's a bridge which crossed over to what used to be a pub. Funnily enough, back in the 1800s, the name escapes me, it's the Hare and Hounds or something. Or the Miller's Inn, I'm not sure, but there was a pub there. I'm going to take a look at the overflow system. So as I say, the water channels in, down the canal feeder. The, the entire system with water, and then overflows through here. Just show you two culverted channels which allow once the canals fall it allows the water back into the air well. I'm gonna try and capture some wildlife I can see some swans a bit further down. So that's where the water re-enters the air well. Yep, where the water re-enters the air well. It's only a slight trickle, but it has to fill the entire system as I say. So if that's say nine miles long, and it's like two meters deep and about four meters wide, say. That's probably a bigger area than that reservoir in the distance of water. So that's just as big a reservoir of water as the header reservoir, which has been designed to fill it. It's quite fascinating. So, there goes the tram, just as we set off. We've got some information involving the industrial revolution and how this area used to be incidentally the modern 
Archimedes screw which was situated at the Beely's wheel generates electricity um, I'm not sure if it goes through Daisyfield viaducts it might be too far so we'll see uh, maybe we'll just end at the docks of Daisyfield and explain the end of the canal which is missing which used to lead to a wharf which I've just found out well I'm always finding things out Beely invested in that wharf which means the wharf is a lot older than the industrial revolution he's been in business since the 1600s his two brothers were like one of them was called William and Howard maybe hello would you like to be on television? I've got no food, I'm sorry. But you're so pretty. I'm going to film you for the television. Hello. Good evening. Watch out, there's a big dog coming. You might have heard him. He's your friend. Thank you. Oh, thank you guys. Alright. Night night then. Two fantastic swans. So, maybe I'll worth this after all. Very wharf is a mile in this direction. Then he passed away, and so he's Joseph Beely. He's now investing in some of the old infrastructure, so it looks like he's quite powerful at the time of the start of the Industrial Revolution. So of course the wildlife has been here probably much longer than people have. There's probably ponds and lakes here. Well they must have been for the animals to evolve. But so they made their home along these waterways. So we can't just, you know, rip them out. But we should have a bit more respect for wildlife because not only did we use water to power things a long time ago, we had to use horses. Horses have been alongside us, along with dogs, for, you know, thousands of years. Since we first tamed these sort of animals and used them, and livestock, and... I don't know, I think we're a bit ignorant to the way maybe we used them, or... You know, you got to remember, like, the first, right up to the First World War, horses were, you know, dragging things across battlefields, and... You know, when they built the bridge across in Glasgow, or the fourth, the first of five, the Iron Bridge there, which is a tremendous swing bridge, uh, the horses dragged things around, you know what I mean, on the site. I know most things were built on site and nearby there, but I'm just saying, because I know for a fact the anchor for the Titanic had to be dragged, you know, a few few miles it was like these like 76 horses to drag it because it was the roads were terrible and well how else are you going to do it that's where the term horsepower comes from but we've used animals you know for a long time we don't really look after the wildlife so anyway just a little speech about that by the way i'm walking through a channel now towards the end of this canal and it must have been cut out to make it level along the entire wharf so in, originally it was a shorter canal and to extend it they've cut a big chunk of this away and you can see where it's cut into the side of the hill so it doesn't end here it does currently carries on a mile 
to Berry Wharf, which is no longer in existence. So, as I've said in the past, which is now the present and will be the future when it's filmed, I have no idea how to actually convey the rest of this canal to people because the last mile is actually the most important mile because there was mills on either side of it steam cranes everything it was the most active part of the canal is no longer here whereas most people think it ends just there this is where it actually got interesting unfortunately it disappears into the darkness as well so you have to trust me we've got another mile of canal here i'll just try and get Daisyfield Viaduct. We'll get as far as Daisyfield Viaduct. As we walk along the wall of the old canal. That's the way I probably will do it. I think we picked up some very interesting wildlife. I love to be an expert on birds. I bet there's people who can walk around and say that's such a bird, that's such a bird, that, that bird's calling to such a thing and you know what I mean, One's, it's a mating call or it's a desperation call and I ain't got a clue. Just sounds nice I think. Once again nighttime looms and that's the channel from Daisyfield. There's a docking area of some description and canal system. There is loads of canal outlets along these canals. The Rochdale to Manchester. I got a bit of a paradox going on there, but I've sussed it all out now and I'm going back to do that. And there's two canals. One's on the other side of Chatterton, so it'll link nicely. And what I'm going to do is two sections of the Rochdale to Manchester canal. I'm going to go into the town centre because we are Manchester UK after all. So we're gonna, the first part will be Castleton down to Chatterton. And we'll go to, there's the Haywood Branch Canal and there's a Chatterton Branch Canal, which is no longer in existence, but there's evidence of them and the street names are things like Canal Street, Water Street. So we'll find them. And then part two will be from Chatterton down into the town centre. So we'll go right down through Canal Street and end up in Castlefield, the Castlefield Basin, and we'll film, while we're down there, the Roman fortification. Then we can link that into ancient Britain, come back up this way, and do a full loop down again from Elton, and do the Elton Reservoir breach, and then back around again on the trains. And that'll all be done, tied up nice and neat. So we have a destination and an actual aim and that'll be like series one completed of the Northwest infrastructure of Manchester. We will then do Rochdale from the top of the canal and we'll include Rochdale information there, Haywood, Heatbridge, etc. Okay, so the train can link us into Rochdale at the very end of everything I just said. Okay, peace out everybody. I'm gonna finish on the red sky. We're not following the canal any further because we have actually seen everything we can. You go If you're really interested in the Berry Canal at this point, if you go on Wikipedia, there's lots of black and white pictures and information about it. Okay. Manchester, UK, brief videos of time. Stephen Goddard. Hello, everybody. And that is the way I should have filmed the introduction in the first place. And that is what? The aim is as well to get all the information I said in one loop but at different times and one period is obviously 2,000 years ago peace out take care everybody and we'll just go right through the town centre we can have a party on Canal Street and then we'll reach Castle Ton Basin it's now it's Castlefield Basin, Stephen. And then we'll reach...